Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. I have said this before. There are so many who would ask, do those from the other side of the veil whom I represent, are they truly aware of what humanity is going through? And the answer is more than you know. And the reason is this, because you have separated us so completely, made us something that is on high and you are on low. You have put a barrier, a wall, often between the creative source and yourself. You can see the barrier very clearly. When you look at the protocols and the doctrines of the many spirituality groups and doctrines and religions on the planet, there is so much worship and bowing down to that which you see as so sacred, but you don't include it as being anything that you are as well. Dear ones, we have said it before, you are a piece of the creator. And this is the truth. Perhaps it is the largest truth that we have ever spoken. And we have spoken it for 30 years. There's no separation. We are so aware of what you're going through because we are going through it with you. Indeed, you are never alone. Indeed, you are dearly loved. Indeed, there is something between us that is more than just a relationship. Inside you, at the cellular level, you might even say at the most smallest important pieces of you, even the DNA and smaller are multidimensional pieces of the creator itself. Made in his image. You've heard that. The image is love. All of you are the image of love. I would like to talk, talk today about one of four things. It's a series for this month. And I'm going to call it the four faces of fear. Now, right away, there will be those who are listening to this broadcast and saying, well, wait a minute. I'm not a subscriber, and that's going to exclude me from the other messages. And that is not so. Listen up. I told my partner years ago that every single channeling I do should be free. And that there should be a method to make them free for the world. As many channels as possible, as many channels that are recorded should be given away, and they are. There is a place on my partner's website where you can go and hear everything that we have ever channeled. There is one channel for Healing Wednesday, and they will indeed go to this place. Eventually, you'll see them all. So do not feel excluded as I present number one of four, because you can hear the all four if you choose. The subject, the four faces of fear. I say faces because that's what you look at. I didn't say attributes because that gives it perhaps a little more emphasis. It's a face. What do you know about a face? Everything is a metaphor. Dear ones, do I have to tell you that again? Even in the channeling, even in the messages, even in the language you hear it, there are metaphors. I'll say many things that sound odd until you understand the metaphor. What do you know about a face? First of all, you recognize a face and you can see where a face is friendly or not. But every single face is changeable. You can smile. You can frown. The four faces of fear. Now, why would I talk about fear? 
when we have the healing modalities that we present here, where the entire subject of the day is healing, why would I talk about fear? It seems to be an opposite to healing. So I will tell you again, for all of these years, we have been saying these things, and now it comes to a head, a point, a focus. Here is the statement. You should hear it yet again. The opposite of healing is fear. If you are fearful, dear ones, nothing that is presented in any of these programs truly can get around that. That's the face that you have chosen for yourself. That particular face, dear ones, is a face that will interrupt almost anything that we can give you. We can't get past fear. You can't get past fear. It stops it all. Crying, are you really, are you really saying that there, there's a barrier that we, that even with, with, with good health and with good nutrition and all those things? Yes. That's what I'm telling you. Because true healing is done with a consciousness and not objects and not simply remedies. It has to do with your consciousness agreeing with what you're doing in order to send your body messages of hope and joy, compassion and healing. And if you're afraid, it all simply stops at that wall called fear. Four faces. I want to talk about the first one. It's the 3D one. It's the duality one. It's the most basic one. And there will be those of you who say it can't change. This cannot change. Oh, yes, it can. Survival. You are born with the fears that accompany survival. Intuitively. Born. Fear of the dark. Fear, by the way, that you might be eaten. Now you'll say, wait a minute, we're not going to be eaten, really. Because that fear goes from, from the old days of being afraid of being eaten by the Bengal tiger to being eaten by your peers or your situation or those around you or your competition. Do you see where I'm going? It's the fear of being eaten by that which you cannot control. There's more. The fear that you will not then survive because you are not perhaps good enough. These are basic survival instincts, you might say. A psychologist will say, that's correct. You come in with them. Any mother knows this. How long does it take for you to understand that within the child that you have, that you're looking at and that you love so much, they're all the things you never taught them. <laughs> There's jealousy and rage and competition and greed and all of those basic instincts, the immaturity, no elegance yet. It's all there. And you didn't ask anything <laughs> to them to, or teach anything to them to get them in that, in that modality it just came with the package, didn't it? So you know I'm right. Now what I'm going to tell you this. Now we're going to talk about solutions. First of all, a statement. Even though these things are instinctual and you come in with them, they are programs. That's all they are. Call them engrams, if you wish. They are stamped upon your psyche, and they are not hard hardwired. There's a difference. There's not really much that's hardwired except how your body functions. Everything else, especially in the consciousness, is a program. You come in with a legacy of the energy of the planet that supersedes you. All that has happened with low and high consciousness and duality for eons is stamped upon you and you come in afraid. That is a program, and like every program that you've heard on these shows, all the things, it can be rewritten. It is rewritable. 
Interesting. Why does it show itself the way it does? It's almost like what you see, dear ones, with oil and water. You might have a glass of water and a little oil on it, and the oil stays on top. Let's say that's a, you're looking at the glass of water, which is a, a metaphor here of, of your consciousness when you arrive on the planet, and there's the oil representing all the negative things that's on top. It's only a fraction of the fluid, of the majesty, the joy, the compassion that is underneath that, that oil that's just floating on top. You've got to get through the oil. You've got to scrape it off. You can rewrite it. But it floats on top, and that's the first thing that you experience, and you've got to get through I want to tell you a story. It's a story about a child. The child will, will remain nameless, a little girl. I want to tell you what she experienced and what she did. Because this is a wise little girl. You might say that this little girl kind of knew how things worked and figured it out for herself. There was one night when she went to bed. And when she woke up in the middle of the night, for whatever reason, she looked over and she got chills because in the chair that was in her room was a horrible creature. She could just make out almost every, every single shade of, of its face, of its body, and it was just looking at her and it wasn't moving. It was just staring at her. She was so afraid. Afraid of the dark, afraid of what was in the dark, of course. All these instinctual things that she had. Her mom came into the room because she was whimpering. Turned on the light. And she realized that the monster was a clump of used clothing that she had simply put in the chair. That her imagination and her fear had created all of the things that she was certain of that were going to leap out of the chair and eat her, or worse. And all of these things, she realized, were there. When her mother turned off the light, interestingly enough, the monster returned in her mind, and she realized that this was something that was going to happen over and over. It was, it was impossible for her to, like, rewrite this. It was instinctual. And what she did, I want you to listen carefully. She created an angel. <laughs> whether it was a clump of clothes or whether it's something she hung by the door that superseded anything that was dark. And when she went to sleep and when the light was off, she could look at that and say, Dear angel, and she gave it a name, let nothing inappropriate be presented to me tonight in either my dreams or my room because I'm protected. What a wise little girl. How about you? That was all a metaphor and that was about a child. How about you right now? Can you create something? that says, I am magnificent. And there is nothing that has come in that is, that is more powerful than my magnificence. Nothing that has come in with my birth that I would call fear of darkness or any of the phobias. It's all rewritable. And I am rewriting it because my magnificence will shine through anything dark. Does that work? Oh, yes. Just like the little girl. It works so well because you are creating you. Rewriting the things that are inappropriate that have come in that do not reflect you at all. Don't reflect your magnificence at all. That's just the beginning of what you can do. As I describe the other three fears, you're going to find a similarity of solution in every single one of them. But they are all in your control. That's the magnificent human that I know. And so it is.